Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. These are your Linux, open source and privacy news for the end of April 2020. This month we have some big releases with Fedora 32 and Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, including its myriad of derivatives. We also have some window manager improvements for GNOME and KDE and more hardware shipping Linux. So let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by the Linux Experiment. Yep, in these dire times I will sponsor myself and tell you about a few things I've got going on. My enormous Linux media group now contains a second channel, dedicated to gaming on Linux. I started doing some Metro Exodus, but other games are coming, especially some Stellaris Federations, so don't hesitate to subscribe if you want to see that, and let me know what you'd like to see. I'm also on Library, so if you don't like YouTube, don't hesitate to follow me there. All my videos are available there, so enjoy your life free from Google's grasp if you want to. I also will push the obligatory Patreon page. Patrons enjoy monthly Patreon casts, all the video sources and project files for all my videos, including archives for older ones, and the right to vote each month on which topics I'll cover. So if you feel like supporting the channel and having a bit more input on where I'm going with it, don't hesitate to subscribe there. I'll leave a link for everything down in the description of the video, thank you for your support, and let's end it here for the shameless self-promotion. Now onto your news. April the 16th. Kwin, KDE's window manager, has been forked to speed up its development in certain areas. Kwin FT, as it's called, has a few goals, mainly improving composition performance and improving support for Wayland. These goals are already well underway in the first release of the window manager. But why fork it? Well, the developer says it's to avoid Kwin becoming unstable due to the rapid pace of development. This has proven controversial already, so we'll have to see how this develops. Kwin FT is a drop-in replacement, which means that it shouldn't break anything related to KDE if you decide to move over to it. April the 17th. Matter, the GNOME compositor and window manager, now supports full-screen unredirect for Wayland. This means that programs that run full-screen, like games, can now bypass the compositor to be displayed when using Wayland, and thus benefit from increased performance. It also solves the screen-tearing problem that the same mode has on X11, so it should be one of the main advantages of Wayland for future gaming on Linux. April the 20th. DXVK 1.6.1 was released with a host of bug fixes for DirectX 9 and some Vulkan fixes on Nvidia systems. A few game-specific problems have also been solved, including for Battlefield 2, Half-Life Alex, Crisis, Heavy Rain or LA Noir. April the 21st. Canonical and the Ubuntu team have published a small retrospective of Ubuntu appearing in popular TV shows and movies, and while it's not exactly news, it's still nice to see that a few very popular shows like The Big Bang Theory or Veronica Mars feature the open source OS. April the 22nd. Debian decided to drop older hardware support, namely some very old input and video drivers. The official reason is that they are unmaintained upstream and provide no value to the distro itself. This has stirred up quite a controversy, as Debian was usually very well regarded in terms of stability and compatibility. I can't fault them for this, the burden of keeping old stuff alive while no one is really maintaining or evolving the drivers is pretty hard, so some stuff has to be removed at some point. Vivaldi partnered up with DuckDuckGo to implement their tracker radar. This feature that I mentioned in the last news video is a block list, allowing your browser to block trackers without breaking websites. It's faster and more precise than most other solutions out there, and Vivaldi is now probably better for it. This reinforces the various moves Vivaldi has made to implement some privacy-focused features, such as a default ad blocker. Since Vivaldi uses the same core as Brave, namely Chromium, it's really starting to eat its lunch, and it's really nice to see so many browsers focusing on being more private and more secure. April the 23rd. Ubuntu 20.04 was released. As the new LTS, it will be supported for the next 5 years, and will be the base block on which a lot of other distros will be built. It's a fast and smooth release with GNOME 3.36, the removal of the Amazon Web App, and a lot of tweaks to the theme, which now looks even better in my opinion. I have a full video review of the GNOME version and other official flavors, check it out in the corner up top. With that, work on Ubuntu 20.10 started, and the codename is excellent since we'll be greeting the groovy gorilla in 6 months. ProtonMail has open sourced the code for its Android app, which means that all ProtonMail clients are now fully open source. Beta applications still stay closed source for now, but at least if you're using this service, you can be assured that it's transparent and that people can contribute and monitor the code. It's great to see such privacy-focused services also embracing the cause of free and open-source software, 
and makes Proton Mail even more interesting as a mail solution. April the 24th. Lenovo will start shipping some of its highly praised ThinkPad laptops with Fedora. No specific tweaks or customizations are applied, and Lenovo will only ship software from the official Fedora repos, so the values of the distro are still perfectly respected. Three models will debut the partnership, but more will probably come later. It's super encouraging to see big hardware manufacturers supporting Linux like that, and it also means that these machines will probably run any distro perfectly out of the box without any tweaks. Wine 5.7 was released with an updated Mono engine and more work on a USB device driver. It also brings new stuff to the Wine D3D Vulkan backend and fixes 38 bugs for various programs including Heroes of Might and Magic 4 and Detroit Become Human. April the 26th. The Ubuntu user survey results are in, and there are some interesting things in there. The first thing is that 30% of respondents won the return of the Unity desktop, and 36% of opinions about snaps were positive, with 30% of them being negative, so it's still pretty much mixed there. It also seems that people really want some gaming improvements, as well as more snaps. Opinions on GNOME still seem controversial, with people requesting more improvements to it, and it seems the majority of respondents want more application support, including Adobe's products. You can read the whole findings in Ubuntu blog post. April the 29th. The Fairphone version 3 will support the E operating system. This ethical phone is built for repairability and sources ethically made components, so it's only fair, if you pardon the pun, that it would support a fully degoogled version of Android. This third installment of the Fairphone will release on May the 6th and will cost a little bit less than $500. For those interested in the E operating system, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, there will be a video about that exact project at the end of the month. Fedora 32 was released, sporting the newest GNOME 3.36 and all of its improvements, a new extensions application, more performance and responsiveness, redesigned settings, a new card-based layout in the shell, better application folders in the app grid. Fedora 32 is the smoothest implementation of GNOME I've seen and well worth giving a try if you're not allergic to RPM packages. Kdenlive 20.04 was released and it's a big one for users of the open source video editing King. It brings the ability to easily scale the resolution of the preview monitor to improve performance, better motion tracking, a lot of new ways to sort and organize clips in the bin, including color coding, a multicam editing interface, and support for the open timeline IO format, which means that Kdenlive can now open timelines from Final Cut 7, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. Keyframes in various effects now also have a zoom bar to make it easier to see them and move them around, and a bunch of effects and panels have received a facelift. Kdenlive is still my favorite open source video editing solution, and one worth a look if you're in the market for such a tool. April the 30th. Since the Ubuntu release notes weren't readily available when I made my video review, I couldn't talk about what's new there, but the team has released a video showcasing their latest version. It's a short 2 minutes video, so don't hesitate to take a look if you're interested in that lightweight spin-off of Ubuntu 20.04. Continuing on the Ubuntu 20.04 release craze, PopOS 20.04 was released a few days after the official Ubuntu 20.04. PopOS is created by System76, a Linux hardware manufacturer, and it's one of the better spin-offs of Ubuntu, with a lot of tweaks and improvements to make the default experience a little bit better. The most prominent feature is auto-tiling, allowing you to tile windows really easily through a specific menu in the notifications panel. They also support flatback out of the box, as well as a hybrid graphics mode, allowing you to run specific apps using the dedicated GPU, while the rest of the system uses the integrated one. PopOS is really good, almost good enough to make me leave elementary OS. Almost. And that's it for the month. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!